Like we said before, so many times before, that there is 100% of everything in the world and every person can get as much as he will take. It all depends on your will and you need to express your will, you need to come and to get it, you need to come and to take it and the way that we're doing it, it's with prayers, with filot, you need to approach, you need to come and to ask. And you need to know that the king, he wants you to have. He wants to give you more than you wants to receive. It was that story with a student of Rabbeinu that came to him. And Rabbeinu told him, I am a treasure of your Ad Shamaim, of fear from heaven. So that student, he was a Talmid Chacham. He knew that the Gemara that's written, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have nothing else in his world except of a treasure of fear from heaven, of your Ad Shamaim. So he looked at Rabbeinu like, like that you look at me now. What? <laughs> Say what? He asked Rabbeinu. Are you the treasure of Virat Shamayim that the Gemara is talking about him? That Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have nothing else in his world except of you? So Rabbeinu nodded his head and, and told him yes. Because when you take yourself in your hands, you take yourself seriously, you understand how much Kadosh Baruch Hu wants you to serve how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs you to reveal His kingship. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have nothing else in His world except of, of you. What else the king needs except of that the people are going to know Him. And Melech Beloam. There is no king without a nation that is going to worship Him, that is going to believe in Him, going to count on Him. So now there is a people, bunch of people, they don't count on Hashem. They don't believe in Hashem. There is no king. Where is the king? In the exile, in the Galut. The king needs someone to reveal him. If there was a person like Moshe Rabbeinu in every generation, there would be no decrees like in the generation of Moshe Rabbeinu. Almost nothing happened in the generation of Moshe. Kadosh Baruch wanted to bring so many horrible decree decrees and Moshe Rabbeinu was standing and blocking and stopping and, and holding a Kadosh Baruch Hu back in every situation. So now, what can we say? That Moshe Rabbeinu is better chas shalom than Kadosh Baruch Hu? What, the king of the world, he's bringing down decrees and the righteous man, he's so kind and so gentle and nice and good that he saves us? Can it be that the slave of the king gonna be better than the king? No. Just the slave of the king he understands the real will, the hidden will of the king. <coughs> After Moshe Rabbeinu is breaking the holy tablets, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells him, Yashar Kochacha Shishibata, I appreciate you on that effort, you've done the right thing. You aimed to my intention, that was my real will. The will of Hashem Barach is never to be angry. So why does HaKadosh Baruch Hu angry? Like the Gemara is testifying that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is angry every day. And we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu praising Himself and He's telling us, look, when you were in the desert and Bilam Rasha, He wanted to destroy you all with Balak and the curse and everything. So I wasn't angry in that day. So why are you praising? You're able to do that every day. Why are you praising? All of that salvation that Am Yisrael had in the, in the situation with Balak and Bil'am was depend in Moshe Rabbeinu, in the prayers of Moshe. Without Moshe Rabbeinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu would have anger. Only the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu was there with them was protecting them and gave them Siyat HaDishmayim because Moshe Rabbeinu haven't left one point in heaven in the sky that he haven't prayed to that point. Moshe Rabbeinu was fighting for Am Yisrael and now like the Torah that Tfilah is the same that it protects you when you learn it, when you pray and also after. That's help from heaven. You pray and you're gonna have your salvation in fi five hours, in five days, in five years. You don't know when. You're gonna receive it when you're gonna need it. Then Hashem gonna be with you. If you pray, Hashem gonna be with you. 
You don't need to be worried about your salvation after you prayed. That's a huge thing to learn about bitachon, about confidence in Hashem Yidbarach. You pray, that's it. Move on. Now let's see you moving on. That's the next, next test. But exactly. You had faith. You had faith. You went. You prayed. It's a beautiful thing that you've done. You've done an amazing thing. You went to pray. You believed that Hashem Yidbarach is the one that can help you. Finish. That was one test. You passed that test. What's going to be the next? The next is you're going to believe in the power of your prayer, in the kindness of Hashem, and now you go with full confidence toward your salvation. Expect the salvation. That's it. Happy with a huge smile, broke, no penny in your pockets, holes in your pockets. You can feel your legs every time you check if you have your salvation already. Oh, okay, it's my, myself. Yeah, I have myself. I'm here. 100% confidence, Hashem Yidbarach is with you. That's mitzvah bitachon. That's, that's the obligation of count on me that Hashem is saying. You should count on me. Lo yelcha elokim achirim al panai. Don't count on no one else except of me. That's the, the, the second dibur. That's the second commandment in the Ten Commandments. So important. So important. So the righteous man, the tzaddik haemet, He's the one that is standing and he doesn't let a Kadosh Baruch Hu do things against a Kadosh Baruch Hu's own will. Because a Kadosh Baruch Hu is father of mercy. Mercy is in that concept, but also a father is in that concept. And a father has the obligation to educate his children. And the children can make the father crazy. And Malasat does nothing to do. Even if it's going to be the best father. You have to admit, the best father in the world, they can make him crazy. And, and we made that Kadosh Baruch Hu crazy. He lost his mind. And if you think that I'm making up, you're losing Gemarot. You forget Gemarot. Me that not learning, remember the important Gemarot. And you that are learning, don't remember the most important Gemarot. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us that he himself is doing tshuva, that he himself is regret on the fact that he exiled his children. He asked me, asked, what the father that exiled his children, that sent them away from his table, what does he got in his world? Nothing. He doesn't have nothing. He just was asking himself, when? When are they going to come back? That's, that's his only wish, will. That's his only desire. When are they going to come back? What it means when they are going to come back? We're here. What should we do? To do tshuva. We're trying. What else can we do? You're not judging us on, on the fact that we're not making it. You're, you're not coming with in complaints. You're not arguing with us. You're not, you understand us. So what do you mean that we're going to come back? To come back, it means to ask him to come back. You should ask me to come back to you. That's the argument between Knesset Israel and, and, and Kud Shabrichu. He's telling us, you need to do tshuva. We're telling him, all right, bring us to do tshuva. It's the same thing. There's no argument like in Shalom Bayit. Go try to talk mm -hmm. to people in Shalom Bayit, to explain people on Shalom Bayit. The main problem in Shalom Bayit is that they're continuing the argue. That's the problem. If you're going to say whatever you have and she's going to say whatever she's got and then you're going to stop, and you're going to think about it. Both of you are going to take it seriously to think, to observe, to pray, not to answer. Don't answer now. If you answer, you lost what did she just said. If you answered, you lost what did he just said. Because now you're, 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 you're strengthening, you're putting more power on the disagreement and you're creating the disagreement now. Okay, she said what she had to say. She said, you stink. Take it seriously. Think about it. Why the hell she's saying I'm stink? What's happening? Why she can talk to me like that? Why she feels like she needs to tell me such words? I'm going to say something about that. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to do tshuva on that. I'm going to observe. If you're going to say, why are you talking like that? What are you saying? Immediately she's going to hit you back. You're going to receive it back into your face. And then you, what then are you going to do? It's getting stronger and stronger. You're playing tennis, you lose the game. You're for sure going to lose the game. You're for sure going to lose the game. And if you're going to win and she's going to lose, then you lost her. 
<laughs> you lost the, the, the player. You won the game, you lost the player. You don't have no one to play. You can play with the wall. Click, 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 click. Crazy. Sugar, you lost the game. You lost your life. You lost your partner. She will not going to talk to you again. After you were so right. Even if you were right, that, that's the worst. If you revealed her lackings, why are you doing that? You embarrassed her so much. You hurt her so much. That's a disgrace. This is why we need to stop also the argument with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And not to keep on claiming and fighting to tell him, listen, we're not arguing anymore. We're just coming to tell you that we believe that you don't want to fight. Okay, we made you mad. We made you angry. We understand. We're backing off. We're sorry. We're doing tshuva. We regret. We're not justifying our acts. We're apologizing. We're saying we're sorry. Let's not fight anymore. Also, you don't want to fight. Let's talk. And we need to be strong to do that. To help HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveal His mercy. We have to do that. This is what it, it means that we should go back to Him. Come to me. What it means come to me? Come help me. Help me to save myself, to take myself out, to redeem my, myself. Because I'm a prisoner. Because I'm asking for someone to come and to set me free. And the wise man, he can come and atone to that sin, to that oath, to that mistake that Hashem made. And if you want to say so to speak, so no problem, so to speak, no problems. I'm ready to be careful. I'm ready to be polite, to be honorable. No problems. But if he himself is saying to us that he regrets on thing, so what? He's like us, that we can be regret has shalom even on mitzvot, even on good things that we've done, we can regret has shalom. He's not like us. When he regrets, he knows on what he regrets. And if the Gemara is telling us that Hashem regrets, so it means that he's got something to, to regret on. No, or else you're going to make him look not good. Not me. I'm just saying the Gemara. The Gemara is saying that HaKadosh Baruch Hu regret on the fact that he was Memaetet Alevana, that he made the, the moon smaller, means that he took away the faith from Am Yisrael. So, he made something wrong if he regrets, so to speak. No problem, so to speak. I don't have a problem with that. If the Torah is telling to us on David HaMelech that he sinned, that he made an Avera, and that the Prophet came and rebuked him, and that he admit, and that he done tshuva, and our Rabotenu are telling us, the one that's going to say that David HaMelech sinned, he's a sinner, he's wrong. What should we do? The Torah is telling us that he sinned. Rabotenu are telling us, you need to be careful with the honor of David HaMelech. The Torah allowed to rebuke him. You're not allowed to rebuke him. You don't talk and go and talk about David HaMelech. Understand that you don't have no understanding about David HaMelech. Something was wrong over there. For sure the Torah is not just making up stories to hurt someone's feelings. Something was wrong, but don't take it in pshat, simple as it's written. You should know David HaMelech is great. Okay, let's do the same on the king of the world. We see that the Torah itself, that Hashem Barach himself, is revealing his straight, honest, from the bottom of his heart, opinion that he was wrong, that he done something wrong, that he was exiling us. That one moment of anger brought him to that situation, that he gonna deport, excommunicated, all of our Israel from their land. Gonna kick us out from Eretz Israel. And now he regrets on that. So now if we want to come back to him, he doesn't mean to make Aliyah, he doesn't mean to do tshuva, he doesn't mean to learn Torah, he doesn't mean to guard the eyes. He doesn't mean none of those things because none of those things depends in us. You're not able, you're not able to make Aliyah if Hashem will not going to help you completing your Aliyah. 
you're not able to guard your eyes if Hashem will not going to let you. You cannot learn Torah and cannot pray with right intention if Hashem will not going to supply to you whatever you need. So what you need? You need Hashem to come back. So we need to come back, but He needs to come back. Yes. It's the same thing. When you come back, you're bringing Him with you. How you come back? You come back to that understanding that He is the one that loves you. And you're going to stand and you're going to argue with Him on that like Moshe Rabbeinu. Like the huge righteous people in every generation, you're going to stand, you're going to stuck your legs in the land and you're not going to move one step back from that and you're going to fight with Him on that. To tell Him, it's not your will, it's not that I'm not accepting your judgments, I am, whatever you want, do. Do whatever, who cares, who minds? If we're here to serve, who cares about decrees? What do you want to take that we have? It all belongs to you. What? We should be afraid of you all day long? That's your will. That everyone going to be afraid to have cancer? That everyone going to be afraid to, that, to Hashem, that their wife going to divorce them or that their husband going to cheat them? That everyone going to be afraid that maybe their children going to lose religion, going to fall from the way? That everyone going to be afraid that they're going to lose the money? That the banks going to cheat them? That the IRS going to come after them? That the police going to stop? That's how Hashem wants? Is it, are we stupid or what? What do you think that Hashem is like that? It's not Hashem. That's the judgments. Those are the judgments. Those are the dinim. Sometimes din akashia, sometimes din arafia, sometimes it's easy judgments. Oh, you find yourself in a situation. Sometimes it's hard judgments. A person can find himself in the hospital without a hand, without a leg. All right, but it's always judgments. And Zohar Kadosh is telling us that those judgments are in the aspect. So to speak, with all due respect, is the Yetzirah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's got judgments. But it's not him. But he's also a father. And the children can make you crazy when you're the best father in the world. And you can lose your mind. And he lost his mind in a certain way. Because in that way it's written that kaas bechexilim yanuach, that anger is a stupid thing to do. And on Akadosh Baruch Hu it's written that he's angry every day. Can you not cross those two words, those two gmarot? So Akadosh Baruch Hu, he had a certain mistake that he himself, with all of his greatness, with knowing, without knowing, with planning, without planning, with all due respect, so to speak, just trying to explain, it's his greatness, it's not his lacking. Who is bigger, someone that admits in his mistake and wants to fix and take responsibility, full responsibility, or someone that is denying? And we are going to help him to deny? You want to help him to deny? He doesn't want to deny. The father that made a mistake the king now punished his child. Now the slave is going to the child and starts to rebuke him. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to your father. Look the king, he's so good. <coughs> and you make him so angry. What the king gonna feel about that slave? That you want to slap him in his face. When you're gonna shut up, you're gonna ask. Stop it, I was already angry at my child, it was more than enough. Me myself, even though that I had to do that, I feel already wrong with myself that I punished him so badly, that I screamed at him so much, that I was so angry at him. Now you go and you add more additions from your mind, from your angers, from your bad midot? Why are you, why are you trying to have a Why are you flattering me? Why are you trying to please me now? Help me! I need your help, I don't need you to, to flatter me. I need you to help me. I need you to come and you to talk to me, and that you're going to talk to my son, and that you're going to come back to me, and that you're going to help me to, to open up and to say, okay, I'm going to give him a second chance. That's what I need from you. You want to be a real person that stands between HaKadosh Baruch Hu to his children? Be a man of peace. Make peace. 
To make real peace, you need to have two. You cannot only have us. No, we're going to do tshuva. No. When you want to educate your children, you need to be the best example for them. You need to be a role model for them. That's the number one rule in education. It's not as much as you're going to rebuke them, as much as you're going to tell them halachot, they're going to learn. No way! As much as you, thank you, as much as you going to behave nice and polite and kind, that's going to be the proof, that's going to be the evidence, that's going to be the power to show to your children that that's the right way and they will always going to admire you and will want to follow you and to go to be like you. Just if you are going to show good and kindness and courage and wisdom with your behavior, when you're tired, you're going to stay polite. When you're hungry, you're going to keep on holding yourself. By that example that you're going to provide in the house, your children are going to be polite. They're going to be wise. They're going to be strong. They're also going to grow, grow up to be heroes. Like that I heard from my friend Mo, um, 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 Moshe, that, that, that he told me that the best thing that he received from his parents was to see how much they loved each other. The fact that he saw that they loved each other so much, that was the best thing for him in his life. That's okay. That's the house. That, that's how I want to be. I want to love my wife also, and I also wish my wife to love me too. So if we understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do tshuva, is it not obvious that He needs to show us how we should do tshuva? And especially when He reveals to us that He made some, some mistakes. And even if His mistakes were justified, and even if his things that he done, so to speak, were so thin and mamash, we crossed all of the lines and he was mamash perfect. Okay, you as a father, why do you care to do tshuva? Why won't you start doing tshuva and show to us? Are we able to control ourselves in 100% to show that we're doing what that we're supposed to? No, we can just try. We can just do as much as we're able to. But He, He's got the power to do. So we at least can ask Him to do. To do whatever He can do to help us. People are not able to deal with judgments anymore. People losing their minds because of the smallest things of them all today. This generation is weak. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's not a word. People are after disaster. People born to this world and they want to die. They don't have the power to deal with no, no, nothing, no lacking. They have money, they are married, they have children, they have houses and they are terrified to lose it all. Uh, what can you do? And who brought us to, to this? Who brought us to that? Hashem is doing everything. Now you want to stop and to say, Avonoteno, our sins, our crimes, are you able to do tshuva? Okay, let's fix. We're not able. Now you failed. Now you screwed up 100%. You failed. Okay, okay. What does Hashem want from me now after I failed? It's obvious Hashem wants me to stand up back on my legs and to do tshuva as much as I'm able and to start over. To start again. So how can I start again if I don't have hope? Someone needs to give me hope. So we need to stand and we need to fight with Hashem Idbarach, not on ourselves, on Am Israel. On Am Israel. And we have to argue with the Kadosh Baruch Hu on that. And to stop him from decreeing decrees in the world. And Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman Breslev is walking in front of us and he opened that path for us and he said, how can we do that to let HaKadosh Baruch Hu decree decrees in the world, to say horrible things, to make horrible things in the world? How can we let him do that? 
we have to hold him, we need to stop him, we need to call him and to tell him, come back, don't do that, talk to me, turn to me. If you have a heart, you're gonna do that. You already do that if you have a heart. If you receive the heart in this class, so you're gonna do it now. This is what the righteous people are doing. They're going to the streets and they're screaming. They're going to the woods and they're screaming. They're closing themselves in Bet Knesset and they're screaming. I was once in a Bet Knesset. The Rabbi Mibiala was, was, was praying over there. Shachrit. He was about to say, he finished saying there, Alen Reshabach. Everyone are praying. I'm just looking at him. That's my hobby. hobby. Always when there's righteous people. I don't know nothing, I'm just looking, I could sit and look on Rav Shalom Arush for hours and I, and I wouldn't move my eyes from him for a moment. Thank God. So when I saw him holding the Siddur to say, to say Alem Shabach in the end of the tefillah, finish, that's it, last Kaddish, Alem Shabach. That Mommy Biala I'm talking about Rabbi, Khmi, Rabbi Avraham Rachmiel Biala from Jerusalem, that Mom Shaul. He's holding the Sidu like that. And I see him from the side. He's screaming to Akadosh Baruch Hu. No one can hear him. He's just just like that. He's holding the Sidu. And you see his face once, once in a while. He's screaming to Akadosh Baruch Hu. He doesn't say Alem Shabach. He's screaming his guts, his heart, his brain, his veins, his, his being to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What, what can you do? If there's someone, I told you that, I don't want to break you to pieces. If there are people in hospitals, how can you go camping? If there are people hungry, how can you eat? If people cannot sleep, how can you sleep so, so cozy? Okay, you have to sleep, all right, you have to eat, okay, but at least... At least also give from your precious time to the rest of the world, to the people. You cannot say no, no, and, and to be blind and, and, and to ignore and not to say, okay, you're not able to open your house like Abraham, understandable. You're not able to give charity like Rabbi Udanasi, wonderful. You're not able to learn Torah like Rabbi Nachman Ibrahim, I can get it, it's okay, but at least you can give 10, 20 minutes. 30 minutes a day for prayers, for prayers to pray. No one can say, I cannot pray, I don't have time. No one, no one to nonsense, to see television, to watch YouTube, to read again your texts, your emails, to check your WhatsApps. You can waste your life doing those nonsense, to snore in the living room, I don't know what, to look for another candy, to, to chat, another conversation just to to dream for another 30 minutes or 45 minutes on your sofa, you, you can give 10 minutes from your precious time to, to us, to Am Israel, because we need your prayers. Because if one person is praying, okay, none of us are strong enough like Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was 100% of his time for us. So this is why he was able to stop every decree, because he was always there. You're going to give 10 minutes, he's going to give 10 minutes, I'm going to give 6 or 7, and, and together we're going to make it. Together we're going to make it. All of us together, we're going to make it, we're going to complete a day. If every day, every person is going to give 10 minutes, we're going to have more than what Moshe Rabbeinu was doing. We can achieve it very fast. Just to pray, Kadosh Baruch Hu, reveal your real will. Stop torturing yourself and us. <clears throat> Be who that you want to be. Like we're saying in that amazing song, Yaich Sof, in the first part, in... You should open for them the pleasant of the will, that they will want to want you, and by that, they're going to open for you the gates of the will to want them. But you need to open it for us, that we're going to open it for you. It's Rabbi Aaron Mikarlin. You see, I'm not, invent I'm not, I'm not just making it all up. <laughs> Thank you, guys.
Ya es of no shabbata ya 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 amat emetumitachet misbulatecha meshoch no amiratecha ya 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 ya. Le-a-me-va-kshem-e-tzor-ne-cham <laughs> What's what it means when you're saying Yach Sof? That, that we're saying to Hashem, Baruch, Hashem, we're calling him in his name, Hashem. Echsof, I'm, I'm yearning, I'm doing my part. That's what I'm doing. So now it's your turn. That's what we're saying. I am. In Shabbos, it's happening naturally. Just you just want Hashem. It's not like you, you can stop it somehow. Just oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>